Hey, I'm Sven from the B Music Project. Did you watch the last video about my simple synth? And did you type or download the code too? Fine. I put my hands on the code again. 500 lines of code in a single CPP file. Not the shiniest way. So I sourced out parts of the code to separate files, so-called C++ header files, HPP. I created a new file, cut and pasted the code, put it into a precompiler condition. If not defined, the symbol linear fader underscore HPP underscore, or whatever you want, then define this symbol and compile all code after it, until the end of. This is a classic way to prevent errors due to double includes. I did this for linear fader, limit, waveform, envelope, key and key status. And at the end I had to include these HPP files directly or indirectly, as linear fader, waveform, envelope and key status are already included in key. Take a look into the code in my GitHub repository and you will easily understand what's going on. Clean up empty lines. Now the my simple synth code looks much better and only contains the plugin code itself. I also inlined alt method definitions in key.hpp. The Klanglinter complained about missing inlines, but this is not a must have. And I also inlined the constructor. But how can we improve the synth? Subtraction, FM, LFOs, filters, distortion, fancy user and Okay, okay, step by step. Let's add polyphony first. Till now our synth can only play a single note at once. It's a mono synth, but polyphony is easy to achieve. Let's start. First we duplicate our last project. Rename it to my simple polysynth. Also rename the containing my simple synth files to my simple polysynth. And remove the binary. Inside the manifest we replace all my simple synths by my simple polysynth. And the same about the plugin turtle file. We don't have to change anything. All ports stay the same and all the rest too. And also the same replacement in the mysimplepolysynth.cpp file. Don't forget the replacement for the uppercase class name. But how to do polyphony? Use an array of keys instead of a single key. One array element for each key. So the size will be 128 as there are up to 128 nodes possible in the MIDI standard. We remove key from the initializer, but fill the key array with key rate. There will be an error. The key array can be created as a parameterless automatic default constructor is deleted if we declare an other parameterized constructor. So we have to declare a parameterless constructor for the class key too and inline its definition as well and let this constructor call the parameterized constructor with a rate of 48k. Error is gone. Now to our play method where we generate each single sample. But now, we also have to take each single key in account and summarize the output of all keys for each sample. There are several ways to achieve this. The most simple one is to put the key for loop inside the sample for loop. The for loop syntax we already know. But here we can use the C11 syntax for the iteration through the whole array. This is for and in parentheses member type, member variable name, colon, array name. In this case, the content of the respective array member will be copied to the variable. This not only works for the member type itself, but also for references, more or less the opposite of pointers. So pointers allow direct access to the array member and references allow to locate the variable at the location of the respective array member. No copying anymore. And it works not only for arrays, but for all containers of the standard template library, like vectors, lists, maps, sets and so on. Back to our plugin, we go the reference way and type for key reference operator k colon key. This means that k contains the respective array member and this is nothing else than key squared brackets index. Now we move key get and proceed into the array body. As the output will now be the sum of the output for each key, we will increase the output for each key. And of course, we don't take the array key, but its member k. We just produced a bug. We didn't initialize the value of the audio out PDR squared brackets i to zero before the key loop. So the starting value is more or less undefined and the output signal too. So it's a good point to introduce a temporary variable of the type float, which we will call out and initialize with zero. Then store the sum of the key output in it. 
and write it to audio out PTR squared brackets i after the key loop is completed. This implementation is a bit inefficient, as we call get and proceed 128 times per sample, even if the key is off. This means some 12 million times per second at a studio sample rate of 96k. So it's a good idea to check if the key status is off or not, but we can do it directly as we set key status to private. The best way is to add a method to key, which return if the key is on, either pressed or released, or off. We call it is on and it will return bool. And the definition is rather easy. It returns if the status is not key off. Now we can check if k is on. Then we increase out and proceed k. There are four more error messages. Key is now an array of the class key in this plugin, not a key object itself anymore. So we have to add the index. And this is the MIDI node number. And this is stored in the second MIDI byte for node on and node off. I am pedantic. I also want to get sure that the index doesn't exceed the maximum of 127 and thus causing invalid memory access. And this is most efficiently done by bitwise and 7f hex. The same at node off. And all nodes have should release all nodes. Something we can do in a for loop. And also the same for all sounds of with mute. This is all coding. Time to compile and you already know how to do this. Open a terminal, go to the plugin folder, use the compile command from the last time, but change the source code file name and the target file name to my simple polysynth. Done. You also know the installation. I will do this this time in the terminal. Create a mysimplepolysense.lv2 folder inside the user's home.lv2 directory. Copy the TTL files and the binary into it. Time to test with Jav by calling the plugin URI. Connect it to a MIDI input and it's the audio output. It works, but you see a notable DSP load for such a simple plugin. And it goes up on playing notes. But how to improve the performance? The cause for the relatively high CPU load, even if no note is played, is our play method and the data type array we used. The CPU has to iterate through all 128 keys for each sample, even if no note is pressed. So it would be nice to have a container data type that only stores nodes which are on. And this container shall be empty if all nodes are off. Zero iterations instead of 128. Possible containers are standard vector or even nicer, standard map. Vectors are like arrays with variable size. Maps are containers containing associated types of data. So we could link keys to their respective key number. Maps are sorted, don't allow duplicates and have variable size too. So new keys can later be added to the map when pressed and removed when off. So split the screen and let's include map first. The map declaration takes up two types in angle brackets. The first one will be the MIDI key number, the second one the key itself. Red lines at map doesn't only store the keys, but standard pairs of cons, key number and the key. So we replace a type for k and k is now a pair. And key is now the second member of this pair. So we type k second is on and k second get and k second proceed. But using standard map is a bad idea. Standard map is not real time safe at all. So this is not a solution. We have to look for another one. You can take a look into other libraries like Boost for a real time safe solution or write your own one. By chance I have something like this laying around in my B-Utilities. It's called BMAP. BMAP is basically built on the largely real time safe standard array and thus it behaves like an array. It has got a fixed size but the most of the features from standard map. So it's an associative container with insert and erase methods. New BMAP members can be created on different ways, like in standard map. The easiest one is by the first call of the key number in square brackets, as we did it in the case of node on in our MIDI interpreter. The iterator functions work too, so we can keep the C++ for loops for the iteration through the whole key map. Let's first include BMAP instead of standard map. The declaration takes up one more parameter, the maximal container size, 128. There's a new red line. The reference type for k is not valid anymore as bmap consists of standard pairs of type 1 and type 2 instead of const type 1 and type 2. So we remove the const. At voila, it works. 
but there is an even more robust way to get the reference type. Our parameterized type plus reference. So we copy the type name and add colon colon reference. This looks totally different but it's an alias declaration in BMAP for this what we saw before. Now we can remove the other errors. Go to the red markers, we are on the constructor. The fill method doesn't exist for maps and we don't need it anymore, as we start with an empty key map and we write it into the initializer. Now to the errors in the media interpreter in our run method. We have to change the reference in the for loop as we did it just before. And as key is now a pair with the key object as a second member, we have to introduce second. And the same for mute. All errors are gone, but back to our play loop. The map members created in run on node on by the use of the squared brackets operator need to be removed when the node is finished. And unfortunately, we can't use our nice C11 for loop anymore. Why? We have to understand how this for loop works. The C11 for loop is nothing else than these two lines. The iterator, a pointer, starts from the beginning of the B map or of every other container to the end. And returns a pointer to the last element plus one. And iterator is increased by one for each loop. K is now an element where the iterator points to, a pair. In the case that K is not on anymore, we should remove it, with erase and the iterator of the element to be erased. And erase returns an iterator for the following element. So we type it is k.erase it, and it must not be increased at the end of this loop, only if K is on. So we remove the incrementer from the loop head and put it into the if statement body. Back to the question. What would happen if we keep the C11 for loop and change the container we are iterating through? Well, it's like storing on the branch where you are sitting on. You call erase and the loop increments the old iterator to possibly invalid data. Okay, compile, copy, connect and test. It works and there is a very low DSP load when running idle. Load goes up a bit when pressing keys as expected. And we can even speed it up by the use of compiler optimization flex. The O flex followed by a number contain a bundle of performance optimizations, like inlining for the cost of compilation time and code size. O3 is the most aggressive optimization. Fast math makes some simplifications like assuming that all math is finite. And this makes the code faster. Let's see what happens. Wow, hardly any CPU load, even if keys are pressed. And a final test in Ardor again. Also watch the other videos in this series. For more information take a look into the LV2 tutorial GitHub repository.